Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, I don't think I received such a big hand since I interviewed Donald Trump. Um, but uh, that, uh, unfortunately for me, is, is a barefaced lie or an alternative fact. And not only that, but I stole that line from the British Prime Minister. So we'll see if they let me back in next week uh, when I head over there. But in all seriousness, it gives me great pleasure to be here as your Master of Ceremonies for the 2017 Our Crowd Global Investor Summit. Yes. More than six thousand of you registered to attend this summit, making it the biggest equity crowdfunding event ever in the history of the universe. Yes, you can applaud that as well. This is the biggest ever investment event to ever take place in the startup nation in Israel. So each and every one of you today are helping to make history. So well done all of you. Uh, now, you may have seen that uh, today's summit is called The Future Is Here. Uh, last year's summit, you may recall, was called The Future Is Coming. So in that sense, our crowd has been true to its word, and one can only imagine what next year's summit is going to be called. Um, but um, it's uh, really uh, quite an astounding achievement to have so many of you uh, here today. It really just underlines the continued interest in and growth of uh, Israeli high tech and also the central role that our crowd is now playing in helping startups to raise funds. I myself have managed to pivot away from Bloomberg to work for what I consider to be one of Israel's finest tech startups. It's Psyche Medical. They developed the world's first metered dose medical cannabis inhaler. I even managed to do a little bit of a shidduch with uh, our crowd and John Medved uh, between Psyche and our crowd, paving the way for Psyche to become an our crowd portfolio company. Now, I'm going to introduce uh, John in just a moment. But before I do, just a few housekeeping issues. First of all, please can everyone download the Our Crowd app. That will give you instant access to the speakers, to the agenda, to the venue, and also to crowd building, which John is going to speak about in just a minute. If you are a tweeter, and we do like tweeters here, then the hashtag for this summit is hashtag OC Summit 17, and you can also use the handle at our crowd. So that's hashtag OC Summit 17. And then just finally, uh, and apologies to those of you that have come from overseas, but since we're in Israel, I have to say this. If your phone is on, please put it on airplane mode, put it on silent mode, switch it off, leave it outside, whatever you need to do to make sure that it doesn't ring and uh, interrupt any of the speakers. But now uh, I'm going to uh, introduce you to uh, John, to John Medved. Um, he is, of course, the biggest cheerleader, bar none, for Israeli high tech. In fact, he is bursting with so much boundless energy that Tesla tried to clone him to put him inside its electric vehicles. He is the CEO and founder of our crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for John Medved. <laughs> You know, it's funny, four years ago when we started this project, I don't think any of us foresaw this. And it's just a real exciting day for me and a great pleasure. And thank you for, for being here today. We hope to entertain you, to educate you, to excite you, and to uh, interest you in what we're doing, and in particular to pr promote a vision of the future, which we think is starting here. Um, in, a, in a real way, both in Jerusalem and Israel, as well as at this moment in time. Again, make sure that you're tweeting, taking pictures of each other, putting up information on OC Summit 17. We really want to get a good social vibe going outside. You've heard some of these numbers. The numbers are a little staggering and daunting. 82 countries? That's incredible. We have people from India, from South America, from Africa, from all over Asia, Singapore, China, Taiwan, everybody's here. We have 200 multinational corporations who we're partnered with who are extraordinarily interested in meeting startups, both our crowd and other startups who are here. We have uh, close to 200 journalists and we have, th uh, actually it's closer now to 300 venture capitalists as well as a large number of attendees. If you look at where we've come over the last several, uh, several years, we've, we've grown pretty, pretty fast. We started our first summit back at the Inbal Hotel 
just three years ago, and we had about 1,000 people registered. We've now grown six times. At that point, we had raised about $100 million for our crowd. We've now raised uh, $400 million. We've grown to a worldwide community of 17,000 people. Our community comes from actually 120 countries, 40 countries didn't make it, hopefully next year. Uh, we've been consistently on the FinTech innovators list. We now have a portfolio of 110 companies, so it's a very, very large representation of all the great things that go on in Israel. Um, we're raising large sums of money. Most people, when they think of crowdfunding, think of smaller deals, you know, $100,000, $200,000, that's great. But at our crowd, we're actually raising millions of dollars. In fact, we're now raising a $50 million fund, which we're excited, and most importantly, as investors, we're delivering exits. And that's important, getting liquidity. And we've now had 13 exits to date, hope more speedily in our days. Um, if you look at where we're coming from, it's all over the world. Those blue dots represent the actual R Crowd offices, and we now have seven of them worldwide. Um, it's all about you guys. And we are a project which is both inherently online and offline. Because let's face it, we're talking ultimately about investment, and people want to meet each other, but it's more than that. To build a community, you need to get together. We can do it online, but frankly, there's still something magical about face-to-face, -face, looking people in the eyes. I wish I could see more of you closer here. Uh, it's a big hall. But this component of our crowd is really uh, critical and very special. Our partners play a huge role, and I can't emphasize how much we are appreciative of these partners who have not only shown their commitment to innovation, but to crowdfunding and to the State of Israel, and they all deserve a huge round of applause. Thank you. We have sponsors, and uh, as you know, this event, we don't charge money for it, and it costs. And our sponsors have been extraordinarily generous, and I want to give them a huge round of applause. There's so many of them. Thank you for making this possible. But at the center of all this is our portfolio, because none of this would happen without the magic that is actually made on a daily basis by the entrepreneurs who walk into the sea like Nakshon ben Aminadav up to their neck, who take challenges and, and make them go away, who get up again and again after being knocked down. And this portfolio, which is highly diversified from cybersecurity to ag tech to big data to robotics to cybersecurity, this is what is at the heart of our crowd. It's the investors and the people who come around the world together with our partners to work with our portfolio companies. So thank you for the portfolio. Without you, this wouldn't be there. Thank you very much for the portfolio. Our exits, we don't want to you know, do too much talking about that, but these are the exits we've had. We hope there'll be many, many more next year, and uh, we're very, very proud of our companies who've exited. Many of them are here with us, and we're proud of the fact that KPMG has uh, uh, continually recognized us for the last three years as being one of the fintech innovators worldwide. It's now my pleasure to introduce an old friend. And one of the things that I speak about a lot is the notion that this business is a relationship business. It's not about churning and burning, it's about relationships and friendships that you build over the years. And uh, one of the first people I met when I got here and started getting active into the Israeli uh, tech scene was a guy named Nir Barakat. And Nir, in his old days, used to be an entrepreneur. He's still an entrepreneur. He's just a political entrepreneur. But he was running around with one of the earliest antivirus, what today we call cybersecurity companies, and he was going into places you wouldn't believe. I don't think Israelis had ever been to before, like the jungles of Louisiana, selling software and telling people that he came from Jerusalem and he was building this software. He later went on to invest in perhaps the best investment that anyone has ever made in this country into a very, very large company called Checkpoint, where he was the seed investor. And this is back in a day when there was really no venture capital except for people like Nir. Nir went on then to become a public servant, and he started in the city council, and he's now become the mayor of Jerusalem. 
He is a friend, he is a visionary, and I'm very, very proud to introduce to you Mayor Nir Barakat, the mayor of Jerusalem. <laughs> Welcome to Jerusalem. My dear friend John, um, I stand here and look at your accomplishments, uh, and I'm proud of you. I think you've done a phenomenal job. I think you deserve a wonderful applause from everyone. Welcome to Jerusalem. Uh, indeed, uh, I feel like a fish in water coming to conferences like this. Um, since I was born. My business career is in the high-tech sector as an entrepreneur, then a venture capitalist. And I decided to retire when I was 42. That was like 15 years ago, 16 years ago. Um, and to focus on how to exploit the potential of the city of Jerusalem. We're talking about a city that has a huge role into the future. And connecting the future into the past is an amazing uh, endeavor. And with your permission, I'd like to spend a few minutes on the role Jerusalem plays into the future. And it has a lot to do with the role Jerusalem played 3,000 years ago. So I'll take you back in history, 3,000 years, when the tribes, the Jewish tribes, came back from hundreds of years of slavery from Egypt, each of the Jewish tribes had a piece of land. You could Google and see the allotment of tribes in the land of Israel 3,000 years ago. And so each tribe had their uh, way of life and cities, except the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem belonged to all tribes. They say Jerusalem was not divided, was not given to a specific tribe. The Temple Mount was on the north side of the city, and you had inflow and outflow, outflow of people, Jews and non-Jews alike. Mind you that 3,000 years ago, there were no Christians. They came 1,000 years later. The Muslims came 1,600 years later. Yet Jerusalem was the place closest to God that belongs to all people. So it was a philosophy of inclusiveness. The city belonged to all. And when you entered the gates of our city, you felt a feeling of belonging, there's a very famous saying that Jerusalem makes all people friends. Think about it a second. You come in and everyone is no guests, no hosts, peer. And it created a feeling of friendship amongst all people and inclusiveness. They also say, there's a very famous phrase, Ki mitzion Torah. From Zion, which is a synonym to the name Jerusalem, New Torah, new thought leadership, new uh, holy initiatives, but actually economic, social, any new things that worked in the city of Jerusalem, by design, by design, it became a new de facto standard in the world because all the pilgrims go back home. They're asked, what's new in the city of Jerusalem? Because everything that works in the city of Jerusalem is accepted by all people present in Yerushalayim. So Jerusalem was the innovative city in the world, the center of the world, an inclusive philosophy that holds everyone together. Folks, that's not just the past. That has a lot to do with our future. And if you understand that future, that role, you can derive many, many tactics and strategies to fulfill that huge potential. Now, coming from uh, the high-tech sector as an entrepreneur, We've uh, outlined into the future some of our competitive advantages. And I've been working with Professor Michael Porter from Harvard Business School on defining some of our economic engines for growth. One is clustering tourism and culture. And indeed, you see very, very nice growth. The city is going through cultural renaissance. Uh, our tourism industry is looking into the future 
um, to, to a very a bright future. We have 70% growth in hotel rooms uh, into the future. And indeed, people uh, understand and see that we have something to show. To walk with a Bible in your hand, where kings and prophets walked. And ancient Jerusalem and the holy places are second to none in terms of interest for over 5 billion people around the world. The other, the second business cluster is health, life sciences, and high tech, based on the Hebrew University and on the Hadassah Hospital, and a significant amount, a critical mass of companies, global companies, like Intel and Teva and uh, Cisco, and now Mobileye that joined the team, and other companies that lead the way. And understanding that potential, I've been working with the national government to create an ecosystem that could help young companies uh, decide to locate in Jerusalem and for companies to scale. 2015, Time Magazine defined Jerusalem as the number one emerging tech hub city in the world. We grew from 250 companies just about four years ago. We've exceeded 600 companies. We had the largest ever Israeli IPO, Mobileye, that got, went public 2015. And our crowd, uh, one of the initiatives that I'm most proud of, that can actually get more and more people engaged and involved, not only locally, but globally. And when I look into the future, um, we know that we can take advantage of the fact that the Hebrew University, and we have a very, very strong expertise in uh, um, picture imaging and video surveillance. Um, Mobileye is a great example. Uh, Cisco has their biggest center of video na ana analysis here in Jerusalem. We just signed a deal with Cisco to deploy uh, uh, what we wanted to do, to deploy lots of video around the city and use it as a platform for many, many city applications uh, and be an innovator in many, many fields with Cisco and other major uh, uh, partners. And when I look at the trend and this conference, I'm very optimistic that Jerusalem can, can and will connect the future to the past. I want to make sure that while you're here in the professional conference, uh, you also enjoy our city, see uh, the holy sites, the archaeology, see the high-tech side, enjoy life, invest, partner, and most important, uh, go back home as a referenceable customer of Jerusalem. And there's a very famous blessing in the Jewish tradition saying, we would love to see you next year in Jerusalem. Good luck. God bless you. Have a good time. See you next year. Thank you, Mayor Barakat, and uh, it's a sort of a hard transition to go from Mayor Barakat to a picture of a scary bear, but this is a sort of blast from the past, as we say. This was an image that we showed last year at the summit, because last year, everybody was talking about the bear market and the stock market. To bring you back to where we were last year at the r -Crowd Summit, the Dow Jones was under 16,000. Who would have figured? Everybody was talking about imminent collapse. The whole world was going to come to an end. And now we've seen over the last couple of weeks, every week there's a new record. Yesterday, record high for the Dow Jones. And so you have to be careful in our business because you can, really, you can make predictions about the future, but the future has a way of making its own history. And right now, stock markets are very, very vibrant. Less so the venture market, which is interesting, because usually these two go step and step together. But worldwide, last year was not a particularly strong year for venture capital. Venture capital inflows in terms of cash were down over 20% worldwide. Except there's one ecosystem, one country, which has bucked this trend completely, and that country is Israel. If you look at what Israel received in terms of tech investment last year, 
It was $4.8 billion, a record year. So like the Dow is setting records, we're setting records. But most importantly, look at that growth, ladies and gentlemen. 120% up in three years. Any business that has that kind of growth is already exciting. But a whole country, a whole ecosystem, and by the way, we were not slouchy in 2013, we were rocking and rolling. I wanna give you a comparative data point. In Europe last year, the entire continent of Europe, all 700 million people, 13.6 billion. So Israel, we're, we're, we're gonna take Europe on, we're gonna work with them, but our goal is to get to that 13.6 billion. Europe, by the way, is growing, but look at the two numbers. We're eight and a half million people. What is going on in this country? Why are we generating so many startups and generating so much investment? And what actually makes me most excited is that the future is very bright. Turns out, if you look at what's going on in the venture market, what's hot? What's interesting? Something called frontier technology. The hard stuff. Deep tech. Things that aren't easy, that are algorithmic. Start with machine learning, right? If you want to make a, uh, you know, an uh, venture capitalist interest in what you're doing, talk about machine learning. We here have already got a whole bunch of companies, among them Zebra and Metaware. Space, space is hot. We've got a company called NSLcom. You look at ag tech, companies like CropEx, Tyrannus, others. We've got an ag incubator. We're working with people like DuPont and with uh, uh, Bayer. And most importantly, digital health. And you'll be hearing later from our digital health group at Cure, companies like Switch. It's also drones are very, very strong. You know that Israel just got a statistic that in the military drone market worldwide, 60% of the drones are being supplied by Israel. Israel is just such a world power in that technology. We don't have an investment yet, but hopefully soon. Intuition Robotics in the robotic field, we'll be hearing from them and seeing live today a copy of this world-changing robot called LEQ. In autonomous driving, we are a world power. Israel leads the world in autonomous driving. God bless Mobileye. Okay, do you know how much that company's trading for? The market cap now is nine, 10 billion. I didn't look every day. That was a seed investment from Israel. Amnon Shashua, God bless him is already on his new company, OrCamp. And you look at sports tech. Now, you know, our sports teams, we love sports here in Israel. We don't really play that well internationally. You know, maybe in European basketball, we do pretty well. But Israel is a power in sports tech. And our company, Replay, which was acquired by Intel, you'll see them in a second, they're making history. And we just announced on Tuesday a new sports collaboration with the Adidas family for an incubator to go and build more spec sports tech uh, worldwide. If you want to look at what we're going to be doing at our crowd over the next year, and what themes are going to guide our business, there are really four. We've now begun a real serious focus on building funds. We'll talk about that. We are continuing our global build-out. We're going to be featuring our breakout companies, the companies that are really headed to a very, very high acceleration rate. And we're going to be engaging the crowd in more crowd building. So relative to funds, our, our first and most important fund is something we call the R Crowd Portfolio Reserve. And this is a unique creation. We created a vehicle where for $50,000, an investor can say, I'm into 10 deals. On a deal-by-deal -deal basis, if you go to the R Crowd site, you can find an investment for $10,000. But if you make a commitment to a portfolio, and this is important because if you really want to make money in this asset class, you've got to do it as a portfolio. You can't just pick one or two deals. It's not recommended, and we'll talk more about that later. But if you put 50,000 into the portfolio reserve, you have the ability, actually, of reserving your share of the next 10 deals on our crowd, but you get an opt-out. And that's the revolutionary or you know, innovative switch here. Meaning you don't like a deal, you don't believe in space, it's your right. I mean, two days ago, Israel launched two successful nanosatellites. We, we believe in space, but you can say, no, thank you. You don't believe what Elliot said about Psyche? 
this incredible medical cannabis inhaler and you don't want to have anything to do with cannabis, you're right, you opt out. That's what the portfolio reserve is. We now have close to 500 people worldwide who have uh, participated in this product and I would urge you to be in touch with an R crowd representative to talk about that if that's interesting to you. We then have traditional funds that we're building, but they're sort of traditional, but sort of new. What makes them really new is that tradi really traditional venture funds, how much do you need to pay to get in? A million dollars, two million, five million? You go to a venture fund and say, look, I'd like to buy your fund, pick up the phone, call Sequoia in the Valley, great fund, and say, I've got $50,000 to invest. How long is that conversation going to be? Not very long. You're not getting into the door. And even if you, by the way, call Sequoia and say I have a million dollars or five million, you're probably also not getting in the door. But we've now created a series of funds that are really world class, where the minimums are 50,000. And we're focused on stage investing, so very early stage, our crowd first, you'll see them later today. Sector investing, so we're picking what we think are the important sectors, things like agriculture, Maniv Mobility, which we'll be announcing today, which is the leader in transportation technology and autonomous driving. We're announcing that investment and that partnership and our crowd cure in the digital health arena. And now we're starting to actually add in geography funds that are outside of Israel. We launched successfully and funded a fund for Australia where we think that the future in Australia is very, very bright for startups. And finally, strategic funds or strategy funds where our crowd squared is a continuity fund which allows you to invest only in the winners, the companies that are basically getting an up round, or our crowd 50, which is an index fund, where you actually get 50 companies from our crowd in a single vehicle, all for $50,000. And you'll see more funds roll out over the course of this year, I can guarantee that. We talked about the agricultural fund. We're very proud of the fact that people like DuPont and Bayer, DuPont who's acquiring Dow and Bayer is acquiring Monsanto, are partnering with a crowdfunding platform from Jerusalem. And the reason that they are, by the way, is because this country absolutely rocks and punches way out of our weight class in terms of ag tech. You look at our Cure Fund, we have partnerships, including people like Johns Hopkins, you'll hear from them today, and Maniv we mentioned. We're also very much committed to building out our global presence. And if you look at what we achieved in the past year with our announcement of the partnership with UOB, which is one of Singapore's leading banks, a big delegation are here today, this is the model for us going forward. Working with people who have deep ties in their own ecosystem, who can help our crowd both not just raise money, but also help our companies penetrate and partner with elements and companies in that region, as well as source technology deals. We'll be announcing our first deals with our Singapore partner very, very soon. And we have a new partnership to announce today, which is in Taiwan with the Shanghai Commercial and Savings Bank. There's a picture from just two or three days ago. And uh, um, I mean, I know we look like we could be maybe the front four of an uh, American football team. Uh, but the bottom of Dennis probably more of a wide receiver. Um, but in, in any event, we're very excited about this and we're delighted to welcome John Young and his whole team here. And this partnership in Taiwan is going to be more of the same, of building relationships that are deep and important for our global build-out. And we talked about breakout companies. We're unbelievably proud of the fact that our portfolio of 110 companies are constantly appearing in the lists of the top 10 or the most innovative or the ones to watch. This is from just this week from Fast Company. And Fast Company published a list of the top 10 most innovative companies in Israel, and we have three. Proud of Argus and the uh, anti-hacking for cars, and Freydos building this incredible uh, platform for freight forwarding, and Psyche, uh, Elliot's uh, home favorite. But it turns out that our companies are on these lists and are not just in Israel. So in the machine learning list, the top five, look at that, led by Google and IBM, there's Zebra Medical, and we don't have it on the slide, but they have an India list, and number one in terms of innovative company in India is our company Zoomcar, who you'll be seeing in just a few minutes, and we're very, very proud of them. Let's give these guys an applause. This is really... 
I mean, I, 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 you're going to get a chance in the sessions here to go hear from many of these companies, companies like Zebra, companies like Consumer Physics with the revolutionary SIO, which has now been built into a smartphone, companies like Surgical Theater that are taking virtual reality into the brain, companies like Seleno, who are building a next generation of Wi-Fi chips, companies like Inverid, who are making the world's leading air treatment and air filtration systems to save energy and give you us all better air quality. And companies like Impress, who are national heroes in this country for having done the software behind the Iron Dome and are now taking that to the industrial Internet of Things and providing real control and security for uh, electrical grids and others. And finally, our last focus this, uh, this year is on the impact of the crowd. What we've built here is an ecosystem that starts with our crowd in the middle, but includes our portfolio companies, the multinationals, the venture capital funds we love to work with and we partner with, our investors, mentors, board members, customers, and angels, to the extent we're able to reach all of these people and not just get them to fund, but to build, to make introductions for companies, to find key hires, to look for potential funding sources and other institutional funders. This is really how our story is going to be told. Because if we can deliver value, if we can help these companies as a crowd, we'll get better and better deals. And in fact, we're doing that now. The companies who work with us, ask them. You're gonna look around this hall, you'll see different kinds of badges. If you see a, a green badge, the green badge means it's an R crowd person. You can come to them with any complaints, compliments, issues. A orange badge means you get into the, uh, the GT Towerig Lounge. These are our corporate sponsors or corporate partners or founding investors. If you see a pink badge, and there are only about 100 of those, those are our portfolio CEOs. So ask the portfolio CEOs. Go up to a pink badge and say, okay, I heard all this stuff about R crowd. Is it real? What do they do? Do they help you? Do they provide any added value? Does this crowd building stuff work? But more than just ask them, I want to stop that for one second. More than just ask them, okay? I, I knew I was going to make one error at least during the day. Um, more than just ask them, get involved in building today. And I'm going to show you in a second what that involvement looks like, but I'm going to play this cool video with the loud music first. So what, what this proves and shows you in just a little uh, nice picture of Oded and Yinon is that through one or two connections, you can get so far. And when you look at this hall and you say, what is the power of just this subset of our international crowd? How much can you guys do for our companies? It's huge. So do it. First, get the R Crowd app. If you get the R Crowd app, you can participate in something we call R Network, and you can do one of three things. You can either help a company by making an introduction, we call it help a company grow. You can help fill a position, get your cousin who's graduating MIT to work for one of our companies, and you can help spread the word. Okay, you can go and repost on your social networks, go to OC Summit 17, that hashtag, and be a part of the building. So with all of this, this is really where we're we're headed, we're very, very excited um, to move forward with the crowdfunding, and I'm gonna get off the stage and I'm gonna announce though one last thing, which is that those who actually really rock it in terms of crowd building today, we're gonna give you some prizes. And the prizes, of course, you know, what would you expect, are from our companies. Things like a SIO, to get a molecular, everyone needs a molecular sensor in your pocket, Pixie location devices, 
the wonderful Bird, which is a wireless control device, or our favorite winery, who's one of our sponsors, Vaut Wine. Go do your crowd building. At the end of the day, we'll announce the winners of that. And again, thank you very much for being here. Check out the booths. Check out the panels. There'll be 20 panels. Go enjoy the waffles, which you'll be getting fresh waffles today, as well as Sachlab, and meet people and network and help us build our crowd and help us build the technology scene both here in Israel and around the world. Thank you very much.